Stephen Edwin King was born in 1947 in Portland, Maine, the second son of Donald and Nellie Ruth Pillsbury King. After his parents separated when Stephen was young, he and his older brother David were raised by his mother. He spent part of his childhood in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Stratford, Connecticut, where his father's family lived at the time. Stephen attended Durham Grammar School and then Lisbon Falls High School, graduating in 1966. Since his sophomore year at the University of Maine Orono, he has written a weekly column for the school newspaper, The Maine Campus. He was also active in student politics and served as a member of the student council. He became supportive of the anti-war movement on the Orono campus and, from a conservative point of view, came to his position that the Vietnam War was unconstitutional. He graduated from the University of Maine at Orono in 1970, and his I got my bachelor's degree. He is English and qualified to teach in high school. A survey by the draft committee shortly after graduation found him rated 4F due to high blood pressure, limited vision, flat feet, and a perforated eardrum. He and Tabitha Spruce were married in January 1971. He met Tabitha in the archives of the Fogler Library at the University of Maine in Orono, where they were both working as undergraduates. Unable to find a teaching job quickly, the King family lived on income from industrial laundry workers, student loans and savings, and occasionally sold short stories in men's magazines to supplement their income. Stephen had his first professional short story sale, The Glass Floor, in 1967 for Sterling Mystery Stories. During the early years of his marriage, he continued to sell articles to men's magazines, many of which were later collected in the Night Shift collection and published in other anthologies. In the fall of 1971, Stephen began teaching English at Hampton Academy, a public high school in Hampton, Maine. He continued to write short stories, working on novels in the evenings and weekends. In the spring of 1973, Doubleday and Company accepted the novel Carrie for publication. On her mother's day that year, Stephen was told by her new Doubleday editor, Bill Thompson, that if she sold paperbacks in bulk, she would have the means to give up teaching and write full-time. I found out. He has used some of his college experience in dramatic company to make cameos in several film adaptations of his work, as well as play a small role in George Romero's film Knight Rider. Did. Joe Hill King also appeared in Creep Show, released in 1982. Stephen made his directorial debut in 1985, writing the screenplay for the film Maximum Overdrive, an adaptation of his short story truck. Stephen and Tabitha provide scholarships to local high school students and contribute to many other local and national charities. Stephen was awarded the National Book Foundation Medal in 2003 for his outstanding contribution to his letter to the Americans and the National Medal of the Arts in 2014. Books are a uniquely portable magic. If you don't have time to read, you don't have the time, or the tools, to write. Simple as that. Books are the perfect entertainment, no commercials, no batteries, hours of enjoyment for each dollar spent. What I wonder is why everybody doesn't carry a book around for those inevitable dead spots in life. Monsters are real, and ghosts are real too. They live inside us, and sometimes, they win. When his life was ruined, his family killed, his farm destroyed, Job knelt down on the ground and yelled up to the heavens, Why God? Why me? And the thundering voice of God answered, There's just something about you that pisses me off. Good books don't give up all their secrets at once. The road to hell is paved with adverbs. Both Rowling and Meyer, they're speaking directly to young people. The real difference is that Joe Rowling is a terrific writer and Stephanie Meyer can't write worth a darn. She's not very good. If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others, read a lot and write a lot. 
You can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will. I think that we're all mentally ill. Those of us outside the asylums only hide it a little better, and maybe not all that much better after all. If you liked being a teenager, there's something really wrong with you. Alone. Yes, that's the key word, the most awful word in the English tongue. Murder doesn't hold a candle to it and hell is only a poor synonym. A short story is a different thing altogether, a short story is like a quick kiss in the dark from a stranger. Speaking personally, you can have my gun, but you'll take my book when you pry my cold, dead fingers off of the binding. The thing under my bed waiting to grab my ankle isn't real. I know that, and I also know that if I'm careful to keep my foot under the covers, it will never be able to grab my ankle. Hearts can break. Yes, hearts can break. Sometimes I think it would be better if we died when they did, but we don't. Remember, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. A little talent is a good thing to have if you want to be a writer. But the only real requirement is the ability to remember every scar. Any word you have to hunt for in a thesaurus is the wrong word. There are no exceptions to this rule. 